हेलो अंजलि हेलो ओके रजिस्टर सर हेज जॉइन No, ma'am. I don't think. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Call. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am. Ah. No, I'm not it. Angela is calling. Let's just ask, ma'am. Who is calling? Hello, am I audible? Yes, yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir is joining. Sir has joined. Okay, we can start. Okay, ma'am. Can we proceed, okay, sir? Yes, yes. Yeah. Please, Anjali, start. Yes, ma'am. 
Good evening, one and all. A very warm welcome to all the esteemed members of the academic and administration and everyone else gathered here today for the valedictory ceremony of the third edition of the Professor Dr. N. R. Madhava Menon National Parliamentary Debate. The Society for Literature and Debating is honored to have hosted yet another successful edition after conducting the previous editions in 2020 and 2021. DSNPD 2022 witnessed participation from more than 260 participants, comprising of 80 teams and over 70 adjudicators, both national and international, over the course of three days. The tournament was a multi level style competition with five end rounds and four elimination rounds. I now invite respected Professor Dr. P. Sri Sudha Ma'am to present the introductory remarks. Thank you, Anjali. Respected Professor Ye Rajan Prasad Garu, my beloved Guru and former Vice Chancellor of Acharya Nagajana University. Most respected Registrar Professor Madhusudan Garu, beloved colleagues, student friends, and participants from various parts of India as well as uh, foreign nationals. Very good evening to one and all. Indeed, it is a great privilege for me to provide uh, the valedictory remarks in connection with the third edition of NR Madhav Menon debate competition. I will take five minutes uh, from you for the purpose of expressing my own remarks. When I went through the literature, from time immemorial, in India, we have very, very strong foundation with regard to the culture of debating. There are four important sources are identified by me. The first source is Upanishads. There are 108 Upanishads are there, out of which one Upanishad, popularly known as Burhadaranyaka Upanishad. It talks about King Janaka used to patronize debates in his kingdom, wherein there are various kinds of debates, ranges from different, different subjects. The first one is the religion, second one is morals, third one, various doctrines, and the last one is the social issues. Likewise, in our Upanishads itself, our ancient uh, forefathers, they have clearly discussed about the importance of debate in our Upanishads. And uh, moreover, when the king used to conduct the debate programs, not only uh, the male scholars, but uh, if we read the history, the female scholars have participated in the debating competition. Out of all competitions, the participation of Gargeyi is one of the most remarkable one. After Upanishads, one more important source we can trace out with regard to debating, that is Charaka Samhita. According to our basic understanding, this Charaka Samhita talks about the law of medicine, as well as certain parts of surgery. But uh, in the Charaka Samhita, one particular chapter talks about how to conduct an examination with regard to debating, wherein they have pointed out two important kinds of debates should be known to a Vaidya. Uh, he is popularly known as a doctor. So that is, there are two kinds of debates are discussed in Charaka Samhita. The first one is Anuloma uh, debate and the second one is Vigrahaya debate. So this Anuloma debate is a peaceful debate wherein the person who is expressing his own opinion, he will present his thesis, counter thesis, based on a valid background, he will conclude his opening statement. And the second one is Vigrahaya Sambhavana, 
that is something about hostile debate. In the second form of debate, he will not care about whether he is right or wrong. Winning the particular debate is his focus. And at the time of declaring who is the winner in the debate, there are 44 parameters will be taken into consideration. If a particular person satisfies the criteria contemplated in the Charaka Samhita, then only he will be declared as a debater. And after this, the third important source we need to know that is Nyaya Sutras, wherein there are three important kinds of debates are discussed. Out of them, the first one is uh, the Vada, like they have described in the Charaka Samhita, in Vada also, uh, honest way of presentation of his perspective will be there. But uh, the second one is very, very in interesting, that is Jalpa. So this Jalpa is popularly known as a tribal or a tricky way of debate. Being a law student, uh, the second way of debate is very much helpful, wherein we do not have a very, very strong supporting doctrine or a legal provision. So let me elaborate what is this Jalpa. Uh, for example, if uh, Akshara has forwarded a statement in a way that uh, tomato is a fruit, immediately Ankita will counter it in a way that uh, only trees will give the fruit, hence the tomato will grow with the help of a plant, it cannot be called as a fruit. Then immediately, the first person will counter the argument in such a way that even the pineapple will also grow in the plant. So likewise, tomato will be treated as a fruit. Likewise, uh, the dialogue after dialogue, what the debater will do is ultimately he would like to win a particular debating competition. After that, uh, the third category which is discussed in the Nyaya Sutras is uh, sometimes we used to observe in the parliament also. Uh, it is one of the most unpopular way of debate. Uh, even though for a point of time, we will win the argument, but it will not sustain. So the third way of debating is popularly known as Vitanda. So in Telugu also, if a person is speaking pointlessly, uh, that is popularly known as Vitanda Vada. So without having a scholarly support, if a person forwards his point of view, uh, that will be called as Vitanda Vada. So likewise, uh, in Nyaya Sutras also, there are three important kinds of debates are presented and uh, Finally, uh, we can see uh, the Buddhist culture, wherein the Buddhist monks are also well trained uh, in connection with debate, so that uh, mentally they will be very, very strong for the purpose of propagating uh, the things, the discourse, which is propagated from the side of Buddha. So likewise, uh, though today we are living in a digital era, our information technology world, it is very, very important to understand the ideology of our ancestors. So before I end my remarks, uh, let me add one contemporary way of uh, debate um, that is popularly known as flaming. So nowadays, people uh, have started posting their opinions, pictures, cartoons, and many more expressive things in the dashboards uh, are a Twitter or a social media platforms against uh, a particular person or a particular ideology. So many countries, if the flaming is dangerous to the reputation of a particular person or a country, uh, they have started uh, issuing uh, the content takedown orders 
or the blocking of a website orders. So this flaming, if it is positive, it is beneficial for the purpose of uh, uh, promoting a particular good culture among the fellow citizens. Uh, countries are granting that freedom of speech and expression. Otherwise, uh, at United States of America, as well as uh, uh, Canada, this flaming, they will take it as a very, very serious concern. So very recently, uh, this uh, flaming issue was cropped up uh, between um, Hillary Clinton uh, as well as Mr. Donald Trump in connection with the presidential elections. And moreover, if you read the history, many others as well as scholars are also subjected to this kind of flaming. And uh, finally, before I end my talk, uh, let me uh, share uh, a popular saying uh, stated by a poet. H his name is popularly known as Rumi. So let me quote his uh, opinion with regard to debating. So what kind of words we have to use when we are expressing our own point of view? So Mr. Rumi says, raise your words, not your voice. It is rain that grows the flowers, not the thunder. So I have recollected this saying because at Vishakhapatnam at present, it is raining. So that is the reason why uh, the words should be used in a very, very purposeful way. So finally, I congratulate uh, my beloved colleague, uh, Ms. Soma Bhattacharya and her team uh, for successful completion of this third edition of NR Madhav Meenan debate competition. So wish you all the best. Uh, I thank organizers for giving this wonderful opportunity to share my words of wisdom. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am, for these wonderful words. Uh, just as you said, it is raining in Vizag and the current is on off here, which is why it's this dark, but I'm going to continue. Um, I also invite you, ma'am, now to announce the winners, runners up and the novice winners, please. Yes. Um, dear friends, the winners of that Renner Madhav Menon National Parliamentary Debate Competition are London School of Economics, uh, led by Shaurya Chandravanshi and Ted Chang. A big round of applause to London School of Economics participants. And the runners up of this event is NUJS Kolkata. Veluri Institute of Technology, led by Abhirup Manna and Nitin Saida. And after this, uh, the last announcement which is made by me are novice winners. Uh, they are College of Engineering from Pune. That team was led by Arya Kalwai as well as Tejal Joshi. So I congratulate all the winners, runners up, as well as novice winners. Thank you, ma'am, and congratulations to the winning team. I now invite Professor Dr. K. Madhusudan Rao, Registrar in Charity SNLU, to announce the winning adjudicator, runner-up adjudicator, and the finalists, and say a few words of encouragement. Good evening to all of you. Am I audible to you? Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Oh. You're audible, sir. Good evening to all of you. It is my proud privilege to announce the name of the best adjudicator, runner up adjudicator, finalist three and the finalist four. The best educa adjudicator goes to Rishabh Raj Maiti, Sri Ram College of Commerce. Delhi University. The runner up adjudicator goes to Naman Gambhir, Hans Raj College, Delhi University. Finalist three Nirma University of Law, OP Jindal University, Cross Team, participants are Devanchi Trivedi, Pratik Kartikeyan. 
ఫైనలిస్ట్ ఫోర్ దౌలత్ రామ్ కాలేజ్ ఢిల్లీ యూనివర్సిటీ ఐఐటి ఢిల్లీ క్రాస్ స్ట్రీమ్ నేమ్ ఆఫ్ ది పార్టిసిపెంట్స్ ఆర్ అంజాని చౌహాన్ విభోర్ జైన్ ఐ కంగ్రాచులేట్ ది పార్టిసిపెంట్స్ ఇన్ దిస్ రిగా థ్యాంక్ యూ వెరీ మచ్ Thank you, sir, and congratulations to the participants, my current SPAC. Um, I now invite respected Professor Dr. A. Rajendra Prasad, sir, for announcing the semi-finalists and to grace us with his words of inspiration. Good morning to all of you. And uh, yes, it is a privilege for me to be here to uh, say a few words on this occasion. and uh, just uh, it has it is well organized and uh, participated by many uh, this participation itself shows uh, i mean the strength of this particular uh, event and uh, just as you know just i'm asked to announce these uh, names of uh, this semi finalists of course i will do it and uh, as far well as this competition is concerned and uh, this congratulations to all the winners and also best wishes uh, to the not i won't say the say them as losers just only the participants and uh, hope uh, for the best i mean in the next round of uh, this events so uh, let me congratulate uh, dr soma and his uh, and her team for uh, making uh, this event a grand success uh, congratulate all of you who are involved in this particular academic uh, exercise so as well as the list is concerned uh, this is the list uh, semi final is uh, one uh, iit Bo uh, bombay and uh, the participants are manohar nagda and arshit semi final is two delhi technological university participants uh, v sairam and uh, angad singh chawla semi final is 3 birla institute of uh, technology goa and participants bagarath uh, dwedi and chantanu uh, deshmukh semi final is 4 sembayas is law school pune uh, aradom bilai and uh, gaurangi pandey uh, congrats to all these uh, semi finalists thank you one and all for i just giving this opportunity to say few words on this occasion thank you thank you one lot thank you sir and once again congratulations to the participants um finally i request professor dr madhur sudan rao sir to present the expression of gratitude again good evening to all of you after a long marathon debates i think uh, you must be able to grasp the nicety is of uh, debates this gives you an opportunity to learn how to participate in a debate in a learned level in an intellectual society so present day society is a knowledge society wherein you must have the necessary skills to make any debate a fruitful one who have many controversial issues in the country it does not mean that we are totally prohibited from speaking about these controversial issues unless we participate in the debates it is very difficult for us to solve the issue i need not tell you what are those controversial issues right now you are already aware of these things but you must have the culture of participating in the debates in a civilized manner for the purpose of solving the issues you must have the necessary homework if you happen to be a legislator and if you want to make the government to take a sound policy decision which is useful to maximum number of individuals in the society then you must have a lot of homework to do which method or which policy gives more benefits to the society who have limited resources 
and uh, within this limited resources you have to take a decision for the purpose of uh, spending these resources for uh, human development so what i mean to say is when the knowledge society is knowledgeable and when uh, you are facing the knowledge society and when you are managing managing the knowledge society then it is necessary on your part to do sufficient homework before participating in the debates i think uh, you must have the idea on this by participating in this two days uh, discussion you must have the idea on this uh, particular issue so whatever it is every good thing has to come to an end now you have successfully completed this uh, event i deem it my privilege to propose a formal vote of thanks in this evening at the outset i am profusely thank professor surya prakash vice chancellor of dsnlu for encouraging us in conducting the third edition of nr madhav menon national parliamentary debate competition and for giving the inaugural address i am also thankful to professor a rajendra prasad professor of eminence for giving for uh, gracing this occasion and for announcing the finalists and the semi finalists in this uh, event my sincere thanks goes to my dear colleagues who have participated in this program for the last uh, two days i appreciate uh, mrs uh, soma madam ji for uh, conducting this event in a befitting manner i am also thankful to all my student friends and all the team members for their active participation in this event i appreciate the efforts of uh, it department of dsnlu for uh, making this program a grand success finally i am very much thankful to the print and electronic media for their wide coverage of the event thank you one and all thank you sir for those kind words uh, in addition to what sir said we as part of the organizing committee would also like to thank soma ma'am for her constant presence and support throughout the tournament without which this wouldn't have happened we wouldn't have had, been able to have such a successful tournament so thank you soma ma'am this brings us to the end of the valedictory ceremony and i hope all the participants had a wonderful and memorable experience and the society for literature and debating dsnlu hopes to see you all next year thank you professors for attending and thank you participants for being part of the competition thank you thank you sir thank you ma'am so we take a leave here yes ma'am